Hello everyone, I am Tanmay and I welcome you all to today's talk on Computer Science as a Career for Non-CS Students presented by Sark IIT Bombay. The session will be exhaustive, covering various facets ranging from the right courses and projects to multiple options available when pursuing CS as a career. Today we have with us Mr. Aman Goel, an alumnus of our institute who graduated in the year 2017, having completed his B.Tech degree in Computer Science. After graduating, he left high paying job offers from companies like Tower Research Capital and other startups in the US to start his own venture, All In Call. Aman also maintains a blog on technology and computer science, www.amangoel.in. At present, Aman is actively involved in the growth of All In Call, a startup in the enterprise technology space, helping large financial institutions in managing computer consumer customer experience and customer onboarding using technology. Now, sir, I invite you to enlighten us with your words. Yeah, thank you, Tanmay. Thank you, everyone, for taking time. So I think some people are mentioning some cannot hear, no sound, etc. Um, uh, is it fine, right? Are you, are you guys able to hear, hear me out? Am I audible properly? OK, great. So let's begin. So guys, uh, I, uh, I assume that most of the people over here would not be from computer science domain, right? So, uh, okay. So I think this is starting uh, 2017 April when I took a talk in IIT Bombay, uh, organized by some other uh, some body of the institute. So the idea is that a lot of people who want to build a career in computer science and technology domain, they don't get the right guidance. So in our institute, IIT Bombay, we do have minors, selectives, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? There are all sorts of 50 available minors, competitive programming, data structures, operating systems, and whatnot. Uh, the, the, the problem statement is very simple. Uh, people don't know which courses to take, right? What should be the chronology of the courses? Um, let's say you are spending time in the first year summers. Should you take an Android development course? Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Right, so that will be the purpose of the stock. So let me let me share my screen and uh, show you a couple of things. So uh, is my screen visible? Uh, Tanmay, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So this is the resume of a colleague, uh, something something similar profile as uh, probably most of you, not from a computer science background. Uh, but has done a lot of work, like one software engineering internship, as you can see, uh, where some something something was done around Django, Postgres, HTML, CSS, right? Uh, then a bunch of projects around face recognition, around a blog application, photo gallery app, multiprocessor file server, bookmarks manager, uh, some chatting mechanism, web scraping, basketball score counter. A lot of things are done here and many courses around computer science, which is cryptology, ML, data structures, uh, programming languages around C, C++. And obviously the person is not from a computer science domain, as you can see, right? Uh, I have deliberately hidden the name of the person. So they are also from an institute uh, as reputed as ours, uh, and they are from a branch which is not from computer science. Uh, having said that, the, the person is working at a reputable firm and they are making a very good package, which is probably twice as compared to a typical IITN. Okay, so let's 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 move to the presentation piece. So uh, basically, in this talk, I will try and help you guys get a roadmap of what courses to take or what topics to study in what chronology. So at the end of the talk, what you guys should be aware of, I mean, the take the key takeaway should be that you should have a layout in front of you, a template or a uh, what do you call this roadmap sitting in front of you that this is something you should do first. After that, this is what you should do. After that, this is what you should do, and so on and so forth. So a track should be laid out in front of you how you can get a, a solid career development in the technology domain. So let's start with, uh, I mean, this will be the agenda. First, I will talk about some, some of the myths in computer science, uh, which I will help you understand, which are uh, really wrong. Second is some of the hot skills in the tech industry. Uh, what should be the things that you should study so that you can end up with a high paying job. Third is the roadmap itself. And fourth is we'll talk about GSOC, which is uh, an area of interest for many people, Google Summer of Code. Okay, so let's begin. So first is bust busting the myths. So uh, many people have a fear of not learning how to code. Uh, and many people also fear that I'm not from a computer science background, nobody will entertain me. 
so that's uh, i mean today that is very wrong first is ki if you have done programming in school and you found it horrible because your teacher was not good etc etc uh, you need to change that mindset first of all because school teachers frankly speaking uh, they are not uh, they are not well qualified as compared to let's say what you learn in college in i mean they they should not be qualified right uh, in school you only are supposed to learn uh, you are supposed to learn some of the basic things how to program some basic codes for loop while loop etc etc which is what they teach you and frankly they do it quite well but beyond that they cannot go because not everyone wants to build a career in programming so that's why they keep the scope very limited so don't project that uh, to what actual career in computer science is you should erase that memory of your school days where teacher was speaking something you do not understand etc etc so anyone can learn to code second is tech industry welcomes everyone so uh, today you can go around and search on the internet you will find a ton of people who are not from computer science background chemical engineering civil engineering metallurgy etc all of these people they are building a career in the technology sector they are they are working as software development engineer in microsoft amazon google and what not so this 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 should be understood very well that it's not it's not the case now 10 years ago it was but now industry needs more engineers than the engineers that are supplied by the academia so yes there are 20 lakh 30 lakh engineers graduating every year but the good quality of them are uh, only a handful so that's why i am saying ki industry ne- needs more engineers than the number of engineers which are currently there so that's why there is a demand okay so now the second part is hot skills in the industry so these are in some ways increasing order of difficulty the easiest skill i believe is web development which is very high in demand in the market uh so like for example you if you know how to build a basic website if you know how to build a back end web application with some database etc so uh so web development is one basic skill which is quite popular in the market you should definitely try and build a build skills around that uh, we will talk about how to do that second is android app development so because there is a shift from the web world to the android world uh, to the mobile world right everybody wants to go go, uh, go to mobile so that's why companies are also moving to mobile so android app development is a very popular skill these days android slash ios you can say uh, third is machine learning data science data analytics ai nlp whatever you call it the entire that world uh, very high paying jobs are emerging in this sector as well fourth is a general one which is problem solving skills so i have put it at the last reason being i believe a good software engineer should not be tied up to web android or ml or ai or blockchain or ar vr they should have general very strong programming skills or in general i would say problem solving skills which will have very high amount of uh, value in the market so that is where the goal should be so you should not be tied up to machine learning because let's say in 5 years machine learning becomes outdated so you will become outdated equally fast so the way you should plan your career is how can you how can you build a general career so 5 years later some new technology comes in you can pick it up quickly so that 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 is something which has indefinite value because you can you can move faster than the market okay so now let's start with the road map this is the most important piece uh, i it seems like a long road map but i will break it down into small parts and help you understand <coughs> sorry so the first part is around probability and statistics so you would have done some work in probability statistics during the je preparation days i assume so i think it would be a good idea to refresh that it's very important in the computer science domain to have a thorough knowledge of combinatorial probability statistics etc uh, there is a beautiful book called kenneth rosen you can note down uh, we, i think i will share the notes at the end of the talk so you don't have to worry kenneth rosen is a fantastic book on probability statistics combinatorial etc general general mathematics for computer science okay so you can study some of the important concepts from the book uh, it's, it's just a small chapter on probability so you should know how to how to measure the number of ways certain things can be done the probability of some event mutually exclusive event independent event those are some of the concepts which you should be absolutely familiar with so it, they they are extremely useful in computer science because uh um, day in and day out you deal with certain situations corner cases edge cases etc so that is that becomes extremely important okay so this is one part second is around data structures and algorithms so this is the holy grail of computer science 
and a lot of people would have heard of competitive programming uh, various online judges etc so i will talk about competitive programming when i talk about online judges so so for now let me focus on data structures so the idea is data structures are very helpful in interview preparation companies companies don't know how to evaluate you you would have written 10 projects on your resume but who knows whether you have done it or not one option they have is they can tell you look why don't you spend 5 days and build another project for me uh, which they will provide it to you so there the problem is companies don't have 5 days of time in 5 days they want to hire five candidates at the same time a good candidate would not want to spend too much time four days five days building a project so that way they need a short method a short and objective method to complete the interview process and the evaluation process so that's where most of the companies have chosen data structures and algorithms as the area where, i mean it's as good as a j right whatever you learned during the j preparation a large part of it is not applicable in college but then they can't expect you to learn the college stuff and then apply for iit bombay so that's why they say ki look here is the j syllabus you prepare for it which overlaps with your college curriculum college curriculum and if you are able to do well we will admit you to iits same with this is a, i mean it's a parallel analogy i would say where if you know the basics of data structures algorithms you are able to crack interviews of the company objectively in a short span of time so there are some very good books on data structures so there is a book called corman c l r s you can google it it's the bible of uh, computer science and data structures so frankly that book goes too deep into the mathematics etc uh, i think that is not expected at all uh, they they go into rigorous mathematical proofs etc etc it's not really required you can skip those parts so alternatively there are some good books there is a book called Klein, kleinberg tardos uh, k l i e n b e r g kleinberg tardos t a r d o s it's a fantastic book it talks about uh, all of these concepts the the good part about that book is it talks a lot of examples so while corman goes into deep maths kleinberg tardos go de goes deep into the examples and illustrations so that you are able to understand and visualize various situations it's a fantastic book you should try it out so this is the holy grail of i, I would say this is where you should aspire to be where you know data structures and algorithms in and out uh, so apart from that i would say uh, ki, ki don't go i mean you will find 50 materials on the internet stick to one don't solve 50 books don't solve 50 courses youtube videos lectures etc just focus on one book my recommendation would be to go with kleinberg tardos it's a fantastic book just stick to one book and complete it cover to cover skip some irrelevant topics you may find syllabus uh, iit bombay ka syllabus etc on the cse.iitb.ac.in on that web page you will find a lot of curriculum syllabus etc just focus only on that part you can skip uh, irrelevant data structures so that is the second part you should aim for uh then comes the important part of discrete maths so probability and statistics was one part second part is let's say combinatorics third part is linear algebra fourth part is uh, mathematical induction etc so that is where discrete maths is extremely important uh again kenneth rosen is the best book for discrete maths you should you can study that book uh in that book they have covered a lot of uh, as i said i love books which cover a lot of examples and illustrations rather than unnecessary rigorous mathematics so you don't want another ma 105 right i am sure first year students would agree with me uh, ma 105 is an important and useful course but limit of x tending to 0 x plus 5 equal to 5 you don't want to sit down and prove that again so the book avoids all of that nonsense i would say it just focuses on examples illustrations and and focuses a lot on how to apply a certain formula or a mathematical equation to a certain situation so try out that book you will love it uh th that's about discrete math uh, so note down the topics one is combinatorics second is probability statistics third is linear algebra fourth is mathematical induction these four topics should be you should be absolutely through with them so the, i would say these three things you should try and aim to complete in the first year and second year of college ideally speaking probability and statistics could be like a one month of journey discrete math would be another one month of journey assuming you spend two to three hours a day and data structures and algorithms will be slightly longer it will be like a two month journey so in four months you should be able to parallelly complete these topics along with your curriculum so i know you would be studying let's say you are from mechanical engineering so you will have your own course work course load etc but you have to stretch out yourself for another two to three extra hours and that's when you will be able to cover up this these things in 
let's say four months of time. That should be the ideal target you should carry. So that is the second part. Next comes the online judges part. So this is one of the most interesting things, uh, which is essentially I wanted to talk about competitive programming piece. So solve a lot of problems. So there, there are some good online judges. One is Spoj, SPOJ.com. Second is CodeChef, Hacker Earth, Hacker Rank. Code Forces is fantastic. So my suggestion is don't go too deep into competitions, competitive programming. Uh, it's not frankly required. It's useful, but for the purpose, if your target is to get a good tech job, you don't have to have to be a red on code forces, right? You don't have to be very high ranked on code forces. So let's say the way I would suggest you should use online judges is as follows: open up code forces, sign up on codeforces.com, and solve. Let's say in data structures you have a topic called binary search. So in code forces you will find tags, problem by tag. So just pick up ten problems in binary search, solve them. Next. Then pick up, let's say, dynamic programming. Pick up 15 problems of dynamic programming, which are tagged on code forces as DP, and solve them. So that should be the approach. It, I mean, otherwise you will you will see a lot of people competing, contests, rating 2200, 2300. I would frankly suggest not getting too deep. Obviously, if you enjoy that, go ahead and do it. But for the purpose of building a career in technology and computer science, um, I don't think it's required at all. You can just focus on uh, solving 10 problems from code forces, uh, 10 problems on e one concept. And let's say you there are 15 concepts, so aim to solve 150 to 200 problems. That's more than enough. Uh, the idea here is not to get into competitive programming, but rather understand the implementation part. So data structures, may you would have studied the theory. In online judges, you will just apply that theory. When you should do it, I would say summer is a very good time. Let's say you have completed first year or second year. It's a very good time to dirty your hands in online judges. Uh, during the semester, it may be slightly difficult. So you may solve at most one or two problems a day. You won't get too much time because some problems may require, let's say, four hours of thinking. So my suggestion is summer gap, winter gap, which is summer and winter uh, sessions between the semester. That's a very good time to get into these online judges. So that's the that's fourth part. Uh, so uh, any any questions so far? Anyone would like to any, uh, ask any questions? So Tanmay and Yatin, maybe you can ask the audience. So this is essentially the first year and second year curriculum that I have tried to cover, which should be covered in in, in first four semesters. I will take a pause and ask if any any doubts, any questions so far. If anyone wants to ask the question, please ask in the question tab. Any questions? Questions. Um, the first one is why do we need discrete maths for tech job and linear yeah, so, algebra? Okay, discrete maths and linear algebra is very important. So I'll tell you why. Linear algebra will be extremely useful in machine learning because a lot of machine learning related courses will talk about matrices, matrix multiplication, matrix inversion, etc. So you should have a solid background in linear, linear algebra. Uh, second, in terms of discrete maths, I will tell you why, why is it useful. So there is a concept in discrete maths called as mathematical induction. You would have studied some of it in class 12 or J syllabus. So it's an extremely important concept because mathematical induction, the equivalent of that in the tech world is recursion. Recursion and dynamic programming, they are analogies of each other. And recursion and dynamic programming is like a, it's an extremely important concept in computer science world. So that's why you need to have a good background in maths. Um, hope, so hope that answers the question. Yeah. People are asking the names of book and four different topics which you told in discrete maths. So one is combinatorics, second is probability and statistics, uh, third is linear algebra, and fourth is mathematical induction. So these are the four topics. I hope uh, you would have noted down the names. And talking about the books, one is Kenneth Rosen, K E W N E T H, Kenneth Rosen, R O S E N. Whichever edition you get, that's fine. I mean, there are only marginal differences. That's one book. Uh, second book, this, this is a discrete maths book. Uh, and probability statistics will also be covered in this book. For data structures and algorithms, the book is Kleinberg Tardos, K L I E N B E R G, Kleinberg Tardos, T A R D O S. So those are the two books for first three topics. And for online judges, I would recommend Code Forces or SPOJ, S P O J. Any other question?
No, so, sir. So, sir, there is uh, there is a common question like there are some PhD and M Tech students also present in the talk, along sure. with some third year B Tech students. So, they want to know that if they have any scope uh, in the computer science. So, see, like what kind no, of jobs? They yeah. So, I mean, see, frankly speaking, computer science is one job that uh, nobody cares. I mean, you would have had an undergrad degree, right? Uh, if you are a PhD or an M Tech student, undergrad degree you would definitely have. That is more than enough. You can whatever I'm telling is a template for anyone. It is equally applicable for a first year B Tech student and equally applicable for a third year PhD student or a second year M Tech student. So just just follow this roadmap. Companies expect you to know this much basic curriculum. They don't care if you are a PhD student or an M Tech student or a B Tech student. They need they they want you to know. How to build a fundamental, what you call as a mindset in computer science. So the first row, as you see, is just about setting the basics. Second row will be completely about building your resume, and third row is about interview preparation. So the first row, you you in the first row, the entire focus is orient yourself so that you have some basic skills. I mean, just imagine you are taking a course in English and you don't know alphabets. So these are just building blocks and alphabets so that you are prepared. Second part comes is how, how can you write an essay or a sentence, right, or a paragraph or a summary. And third part talks about how can you be like a Shakespeare or um, some um, some famous writer. So this is just a building block. Any any year, anything, it doesn't matter. Four months is all you need to spend, and you will be through with some basic fundamentals of mathematics and I would say programming. I would not even call it computer science because data structures and algorithms is a fundamental concept. When you code it, then it becomes computer science. Otherwise, it's just math. So, does that answer the question? Yes, sir. Okay. So, shall we move? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Next comes web development. So, I would ideally say this all starts in let's say fourth or fifth semester. So, the first and so the first entire row is about first semester, second semester, third semester, somewhat in fourth semester of college, maximum till the end of second year. That's it. That could be your BTech first year, second year, MTech first year, second year, or a PhD. From BTech students, I would say spend two years in these activities, a first year and second year of college. If you are already in second year, then spend just the second year. Don't spill it over to third year. For let's say MTech students, I would say again squeeze it out in the first year of MTech. Don't extend it to two years because you already have some background in computer science. And same for PhD students. Okay. So next comes web development part. So the idea of web development here is uh, so now in the second row, as I told, this is all about building a fantastic resume. Ideally, I would say in in one resume, you should have two projects of let's say backend development, one project around some frontend development or some basic skills, and at least one or two deep tech projects which differentiate you from your uh, other competitors. Okay, so in web development, I would say there is a framework in Python called as Django, D J A N G O. It's a fantastic, easy to use web development framework. Just pick up any tutorial on the internet which says Django tutorial. So as I showed you in this resume, you saw. So let me let me just go back to this resume. So see, photo gallery web app in Django. It's a simple where what the person has done is Twitter API they have integrated and uh, they have. I mean, they will ask a user to enter some hashtag. Call Twitter API to fetch posts and images from the hashtag and render it in a Django web application. That's it. It's a very simple project. Second is a blog application in Django. So uh, again, this is a tutorial. You can search on Google Django Girls tutorial, G I R L S. So Django Girls tutorial. It teaches you how to build a blog application in Django and host it on the internet on PythonAnywhere.com. So you can Google this tutorial. It's a very simple tutorial. You can complete it over a weekend. It assumes you do not have any programming background, so it will teach you HTML, CSS basics from scratch. Uh, obviously, you need to have a basic common sense to understand the tutorial. And at the end of the tutorial, you will have a blog application where you can put up a blog post, save it as a draft, add comments, and you can. I mean, if you want to go beyond the tutorial, you can add a like button, unlike button, upvote, downvote, something like that, or a share button. So try, try, try to try to learn by doing tutorials. Don't learn Django by the documentation you are reading. It will waste. All, it will. It will lead to a lot of time wasted. Don't read documentation. Go and pick up a tutorial where you know that at the end of this tutorial, this is the project that I will build. That's it, and follow that tutorial religiously. So this is what I would recommend. These two are great projects. 
in backend development so understand how a model view controller architecture works uh, again i'm not getting into technical details here so understand the concept of model view controller architecture called as mvc framework which is how the django work understand how to build some basic database tables understand how to join the tables using foreign key so all of that will be taught in the tutorial any django tutorial you take they will cover all of these concepts so again don't don't ask don't ask me ki aman suggest me one tutorial go and google it a large part of computer science is about just googling stuff so just search on google django tutorials web development tutorials so any framework is fine django is something i am suggesting you can go ahead with other frameworks like node js ruby on rails um, php code code igniter frankly i would not recommend php and all relatively outdated languages try some new language javascript or python okay so uh, i mean java is also fine spring hibernate framework is there so you search on google there are 50 web frameworks whichever programming language you are comfortable with just pick up that many people will tell you why are you doing php why are you doing java why don't you do python don't listen to them my suggestion here is whichever web framework you are comfortable with whichever pro sorry whichever programming language you are comfortable with just pick one and move ahead frankly i mean you are not building a google or a facebook like web application so people will tell you php is not scalable but then why do you need scale if you are building a college application with 1000 college students you don't need an infrastructure which will scale like facebook you don't need that so whichever language you are comfortable with just start with that just search on google php web framework python web framework ht so, so sorry java web framework just pick up one web framework and move ahead don't listen to anyone ki ye bekar hai ye acha hai not required so as i said learn by doing a tutorial so when you search on the internet how to learn django just search for some of the tutorials as i mentioned django girl tutorial is quite good so that way the the objective should be to learn the tutorial and at the end of the day have one or two projects which are ready which you can put in your resume you can showcase that i know web development i have done it in django you can always apply to a company which uses javascript based web framework web framework and tell them look i have learned django but i have basic common sense i can learn javascript also i can learn node js also so that should be the approach for uh, web development i would say uh, next let's try another thing which is android app development so android is a is a is a popular technology right everybody is on smartphone these days so it's a good technology to learn again we will follow the similar approach just like django pick up a course pick up a tutorial pick up a video lecture whichever you are comfortable pick one just pick exactly one and follow it end to end so there is a very good course android for beginners in udacity u d a c i t y udacity.com uh, android for beginners course is there they will teach you android from scratch so try some basic projects <coughs> sorry so as an example you can try timetable app in android time management app to do list app any any app habit tracking app anything uh, inventory tracking app or a wallet simple wallet application expense management app there are 50 ideas you will find on the internet L pick up one idea complete the course end to end and implement a project so you should know the basics of how android app development works again in android you will find 50 things native android react js flutter etc etc don't think too much just pick one and move ahead so my suggestion here is don't tie yourself to a technology i mean people will again tell you ki flutter is new why are you doing native android that's fine i mean native android the idea here is to not learn android app development the idea here is to learn how to manage a program which has 50 files how to manage a program which has let's say 10000 lines of code so android just happens to be one means this is again similar to your je preparation in je preparation if someone asks me what did you learn i never learned physics chemistry and maths i learned perseverance i learned hard work i learned not giving up i learned problem solving attitude so that's it's very similar here don't tie yourself to a framework or a technology or a concept learn the fundamentals how do you manage 1 lakh lines of code how do you manage i mean you are a, you are given a code base and told ki build a feature on top of it you should be able to do that that's the idea it should it should it should be immaterial whether it is android whether it is java whether it is javascript whether it is python your focus should be on learning concepts rather than a tool or a technology or a programming language or a framework so that's why i would say pick up native android flutter react react native whichever you are comfortable with just pick up one android development framework and start developing in that and build a small mobile application 
so it could tie to a back end server so for example facebook right facebook is not on your smartphone it fetches data from the server the data is on the back end web application so as an example the blog application that you developed in django in django girls tutorial can you replicate that on your smartphone as an android app that is one very interesting idea so now uh, in your mobile app you can see the blog post that you entered in your uh, web development uh, course which is when you developed a django app can you tie it up so that in front end all the blogs are rendered on the mobile app so something of that project would be something of that sort would be very interesting so expense tracker time management to do list anything you can think of temperature tracker height tracker habit tracker food tracker calorie counter fitness app any app you can think of you can build it a live chat application between your friend and yourself a social media platform 50 ideas are there pick one and build it end to end post it on github so that tomorrow when somebody asks you uh, how did you do it can you show me the code base etc etc show it to them so that's about android app development again uh, just to repeat uh, android for beginners course on udacity u d a c i t y sure okay so now let's move to machine learning so android and web development should be your goal in ideally fourth and fifth semester which is like after you have done some competitive programming android or oh, sorry online judges and all next comes the topic of machine learning it's an interesting topic very hot in the market these days so my suggestion is there are hundreds of tutorials hundreds of thousands of tutorials on machine learning uh don't get bogged down seeing so much of content convolutional neural network recurrent neural network bert which is by a new model by google nlp framework don't get into that your idea should be to focus on one small segment and learn the basics of it you don't have to build a specialization in nlp or ai or computer vision if time permits you can do that but my suggestion is build some fundamentals so there is a very interesting course by andrew ng A N D R E W Andrew N G on Coursera C O U R S E R A. It's I mean I'm sure you would have heard of that course. It's a very popular course. Uh, just take that basic course. It's very interesting, simple course. It teaches you some of the basic algorithms, and at the end of the course, you will complete a project on handwritten digit recognition. So there is a famous data set called as M N I S T data set, which contains labeled handwritten digits. So just a nine nine is written. and again uh, as as a handwritten digit and against that this is 9 this is 8 this is 1 so that kind of label data set is there so the course teaches you how to build algorithms on this data set support vector machines neural networks linear regression logistic classification so all those topics are covered as a part of this course so first complete that course i would say so that you know the basics of machine learning how it works what are the benefits what problems can it solve what problems it cannot solve once you are done implement one project just one project is enough so there is a website called kaggle k a g g l e kaggle.com it contains thousands of data sets so for example credit card fraud detection data set so they will have details of a person how much was that person's age how much was the age salary transaction amount uh, uh, date of birth etc all these parameters are there and against that it was written whether this person conducted a fraud or not i mean for example fraud could be i bought a credit card i used it to purchase something but i didn't pay my emi i didn't pay my credit card due due amount so banks want models machine learning models which can predict ki should i issue the credit card to aman or should i not if i should issue then what should be the limit is it should it be 1 lakh should it be 2 lakh 5 lakh what so just pick up one data set one meaningful problem from kaggle and build a machine learning model around it train try it out on different algorithms which you learn as a part of andrew ng's course so try out linear regression try out logistic classification try out support vector machine try out neural networks all the algorithms that you've learned try it out and build a very simple report saying ki when i applied this algorithm this was the accuracy this was the precision this was the recall so i mean these fancy terms which i am saying you will learn it as a part of the course so what were the metrics that you found when you applied so and so algorithm on so and so data set these are some of the things that you should build a report a simple one page report so tomorrow the uh, tomorrow i mean the idea is in the interview if interviewer asks what did you do as a part of this project what algorithms did you use what was the accuracy you will show your report card saying ki sir look at this 
this is what i did and these were the results so that is the idea of uh, uh, this course so one is take up a course learn the fundamentals second is implement one project okay one simple project which explains the fact that you have used multiple algorithms and measured the pros and cons that's it nothing extra is required you are not supposed to know about nlp computer vision automated speech recognition those are good to have at your level if you have time go ahead and study but if you don't have time you are not at a disadvantage so that should be the approach for machine learning i will talk about other skills now and i will then again take a pause uh, before we move on to the final section so there are some other interesting skills in the market so let's say you don't you are not too excited about web android or machine learning so what else do you want to try so one is cryptography it's a very interesting domain uh, considering that the world is now moving towards digital the number of digital frauds the number of scams are increasing so cryptography is also becoming very hot in the market how can i ensure that my security systems are safe network level security infrastructure level security hardware level security all of these things are picking up in the market really fast right how to build algorithms which are secure so that a hacker or an interceptor does not get the data so that is one area where you can try out a lot of stuff again on coursera udacity if you search you will find 50 courses pick one course and complete it end to end so i would again repeat it always pick one course one tutorial it is immaterial which you pick it because all of them are almost equally good but complete it end to end before jumping on to something else you don't want to solve 10 easy problems you want to solve 10 problems of varying difficulty so i mean this is the same advice we used to get in je days right don't solve hc verma dc pande erodo resnik halliday etc etc don't solve 50 books pick one book and complete it end to end that's the recommendation most people give same thing i would suggest here pick one course pick one end to end don't jump so cryptography is one very important skill today uh, second is if you want to go around machine learning specializations let's say you have time and you want to try out one is natural language processing which is about how to make sense of text based data so let's say twitter sentiment analysis chatbots right uh, uh, email automatic email complaint reply so let's say companies get a ton of emails customer asking about bank statement customer asking about bank account balance etc so how can you read that data and take actions so that's the second part around machine learning and nlp uh, then is computer vision it's a very interesting domain uh self driving cars and the entire world that works heavily on computer vision it's a very interesting area uh then comes speech recognition so google speech to text i'm sure you would have heard alexa google assistant and all they heavily rely on conversion of speech into text so <coughs> sorry in the industry they are spending a ton of money building automatic call centers so in a call center when you call a bot is talking to you as compared to a human so that requires very heavy uh, expenditure on building a very robust speech to text system so those are another uh, areas of uh, exploration you can try them out i mean these are again three four things i am mentioning you search on google what all other avenues are there and find courses on the internet so your approach as i said should not be tied to one technology whatever you like i think some people mentioned about gaming animation just search on google you will find 50 courses on animation 50 courses on gaming search for their reviews and pick one course and start and complete it end to end so all of these avenues you can try each of them has equally good job opportunities so at a fresher level i mean it doesn't matter they also know that if you have done web development you would have done hardly two simple projects or if you have done machine learning you would have done hardly one or two simple projects so nobody is going to say ki look you are a web developer i will pay you lesser salary as compared to ml engineer that happens 2 to 3 years down the line it does not happen on day one after college so you should be flexible in that so again before moving ahead i will take a pause any questions you guys have anything you would like to ask happy to discuss uh yes sir there is one question sure what should what should be the pathway for a non cs guy to end up in ms or phd in top universities like mit or stanford uh frankly i am not the right person to answer that i never applied for ms or phd or anything so i am not in a position to answer that question i think this this whole talk is more focused around job or entrepreneurship or the tech world 
which is on the industry side as compared to academia so let's leave it for another person to answer that okay uh, sir rest of the questions are almost answered which sure okay great so, so yatin wants to make an announcement sure uh, so we will try to provide you with the video of the session and sir many of the students are complaining that they don't have proper net connections at their home so it would be okay. preferable if you will turn off your video okay okay uh, uh, you are asking me to turn off my video right that's all yeah just so continue. Continue. Oh, is that fine uh, is my video off yes is sir the video off yes okay, sir great yes. sounds good sounds good so shall we start continue yes sir okay so now let's move on to internship so uh, while applying for internship really two things yes, will sir. be very useful uh the, yes, the row number 2 will be extremely useful uh when you are applying for uh, an internship at a company to get your resume shortlisted so companies will shortlist your resume based on what you have written on row number 2 nobody will look at your resume and say wow this person has done a data structures course let's hire them for a software development job they will look at your resume and they will say yes this person has done a course on web development or they have implemented an android app or they have done a, a machine learning project basis that they will shortlist your resume that is very important ha huh? so your first cut would be to i mean recruiters will look at the keywords on the resume they will look at certain skill set web development android app so so is my screen visible yes sir yes sir okay so as you can see in this resume they have mentioned a lot of stuff c c++ java so i think this is fine this is more i mean don't don't worry about writing 50 languages companies knows that companies know that if you know c c++ you can always pick up java and python so don't worry about writing 50 things but as you can see you have to have a skill section on your profile where you can mention about all these things okay so this is the first part which is getting resume shortlisted second is the interview process <coughs> sorry in a typical interview you will have two two rounds for an internship one round will be a screening round which will be purely based on data structures and algorithms so they will ask you questions about binary search sorting algorithms dynamic programming graphs and trees binary tree binary search tree arrays vectors so you should be absolutely familiar because if your resume is shortlisted uh, you you want to make sure that you you also pass the screening round so like i'll tell you in my company what we do is uh when, when i post on linkedin or facebook we get like 3000 resume in one shot so it's very difficult all the 3000 resumes they will have some or the other project they will look good so hr doesn't have time to screen through them so we straight away conduct a test on hacker rank where we uh, ask questions on data structures and algorithms and pick up the let's say top 20 candidates for interview so that is extremely important you should one is resume shortlisting which will happen based on the content you mention in Uh, on your resume on row row number 2 second is uh, screening round clearing which will be data structures and algorithm space third is a final round of interview a formal uh, formal interview which could be another data structures round or which could be a mix of where where the uh, recruiter is asking you about all of your projects so don't fake the project section they will actually pick up one project and they will ask you to explain the details so at that time you need to be presentable you 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 should talk, you should be able to talk about the project what you did how did it work uh, what are the challenges you faced you you should walk them through the source code in fact you should host the project somewhere so that you can show it to them let's say somebody says ki can you show what you did in this blog application so at that time you should say ki sir let me share the link with you you can try it out that builds a lot of confidence you will have obviously you will also have a story to tell about so they will ask you uh, what all did you learn in machine learning so you can talk about the concepts which you learned in the andrew ng course then they will say can you show me some implementation that you have already done as a project so that's when you can show the mnist data set then they will say ki can you tell me a comparison of algorithms whichever you would have implemented that's where you will show the presentation i talked about right with all the 10 algorithms five algorithms you have implemented so you should have substance and material to talk about your projects what all, i mean all all these things that i talked about you should be able to present it clearly and with confidence they will have i mean frankly speaking if you have cleared the screening round for an internship 
mostly they would want to check if you are lying on your resume or not so that's why they will ask a lot of questions from your projects and uh, projects and internships existing internship if you have from that section that's it you just need to convince them that look i am not lying they will hire you i can assure you nobody wants nobody expects at a fresher level ki they would know deep web development or a or an expert in machine learning they just want to make sure whatever you have mentioned on your resume you are not lying okay so that's about the internship part so so again i will take a pause any questions on internship part so okay yeah i missed out one part um applying for internship so i would say one is uh, if you are from iits go and tap the alumni network it's very very useful um, start messaging a couple of alumni on linkedin let's say somebody who is working at google why don't you drop them a polite text to dear sir or ma'am i am your junior from iit bombay i am i am pursuing this 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 and i have done so and so things please find attached a copy of my resume it would be great if you can refer me within your organization i understand you don't know me personally but i will make sure uh, that i am taken through the process where i clear the interviews your referral will help me bypass the resume shortlisting phase you need to give them the confidence see nobody wants to refer unknown people that's where you need to be smart and tell them look when you are referring me you are just bypassing my resume shortlisting phase you are not telling sundar pichai to select me right you should tell them ki was sundar pichai is not selecting me based on your referral and then later hammering you that you hired and uh, you you referred me an idiot person you should tell them google will take me through the normal process of interviews and all just help me connect with the recruiter that's it that will be really useful so that way they won't feel defensive that they are referring a wrong candidate and tomorrow they may face consequences of that fine so that that's one part second is there are good platforms angel list is there your uh, what you call as linkedin is there so use those network and platforms i would avoid any intern shala or any nokri.com they are horrible platforms frankly i am i i, I tried intern shala both on as a candidate as a job applicant and as a uh, as a company who is hiring i did not find it useful at all angel list is quite good and linkedin is uh, i would say second number so you can use one of these platforms so anyway i'll take a pause because this is internship is an important concept i'll take a pause and uh, i'm open for questions yes sir there are few questions um the first one is are coursera and udemy certificates valuable in landing tech jobs or internships avoid certifications frankly um, if your biggest certificate is iit bombay degree uh, i know there are people from this webinar is now open for everyone now so if you are from a good college avoid certificates under any circumstance they are completely useless so don't pay a penny in certifications i would say and second is if you are not from a tier 1 college whatever they call it right tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 it's bad it should not be named that way but anyway let's say if you are not from iit bombay then what so in such situations still avoid certifications the best certificate would be that you have completed these projects they the, so the interviewers are smart i mean i'll tell you what i recruit a lot of candidates i have interviewed people who had some cyber security certification for 6 months they did not know the full form of aes which is a very very standard encryption algorithm so i mean as a company we don't value certificates at all we will ask you 10 questions if you are able to answer we will hire you if you are not able to answer go and put that certificate in the dustbin avoid certificate don't pay money on certificates learn skills now build project so the the best certificate is when you are able to tell the recruiter look uh, tell the interviewer look i wrote web development on my resume this is what i did and here is an evidence of that and please ask me any questions you may have i will be able to explain you correctly that's the best certificate so nobody looks at so if you look at this resume do you find any certificate i don't think so there are zero certificates on this resume nothing zero no point putting certificate nobody cares iit Uh, i mean a reputed iit name is enough as a certificate and if you are not from iit your project should talk about it right you should have 10 projects written on your resume which convey that look i know these things i have done work nobody needs certificates does that answer the question uh, yes sir uh, there is one more question is python su sufficient to learn dsa or should be learned in the c++ um uh, i would recommend c++ not python python is uh, python is not meant for dsa and traditionally 
for all the dsa related activities c c++ java have been the go to languages so recruiters might or the interviewer might freak out if you start coding a dynamic programming algorithm in python avoid that i mean it's not again as i said uh, i am contradicting myself because i said don't tie yourself to a technology uh, but let me explain why i am saying that here that you should do c c++ or java it's a recruiter mindset the person on the other side of the table they would have done competitive programming in either c c++ or java so that's what they will expect from you so it's just a small mindset issue uh, it's not a technology issue at all python is equally good it's quite good for large scale computations and all it simplifies the coding thing but that's what recruiters don't want they want to see if you are given bare minimum tools of c c++ java can you code it because let's say you want to multiply two two integers of 1000 1000 uh, digits each in c c++ you will have to write a lot of code in python it's like a into b so i mean the whole purpose of testing your knowledge that can you multiply two numbers of 1000 character 1000 digits each in c c++ the whole purpose is defeated because python will give you a library of it so don't use python for data structures and algorithm learn either c c++ or java among c c++ i would recommend c++ because c is too old school <coughs> sorry yeah yes so um, the next question is uh, can a course on aws help for ml no not at all M aws is not ml aws is using ml apis and ml libraries you are not when you when you use amazon aws face recognition you are not coding your own face recognition algorithm you are just using something off the shelf and tying up api so i will categorize that as web development rather than ml yes sir uh i mean so i yeah tying up api is not machine learning right you uh, haven't coded the face recognition algorithm you haven't gone through that journey where you aggregate data you clean up data you visualize the data and then you train it on multiple algorithms not doing that if you are using amazon aws i think for face recognition they have something called as recognition r e k o g n i t i o n so if you are using that it's web development it's not ml yes sir uh, yeah. some, some students are not able to reach for cs minor due to cpi restrictions any not suggestion required. Of that? Okay. not required not required cs why, why would you want to do cs minor nobody cares again as i said row number 2 is the most important row if you have five good projects on your resume nobody cares if you have done cs minor or a cs certification or a course or curriculum nobody cares just show them the projects and show them that look i i have done all of these things without any help from anyone and i can do anything you want i am agile i am flexible and i can learn any new tool and technology this is the message that should go in the interviewer's mind at the end of the interview that's it nobody wants to see cs minor from iit bombay why would they care i mean as a company we don't look at it and frankly i, I i'm not taking myself as an exception i am connected to some 200 entrepreneurs from the iit bombay ecosystem including the likes of founders of vedantu founders of chaios there is a whatsapp group for all 320 entrepreneurs from iit bombay nobody cares about these things people people in fact for certain for certain uh, roles we we just open up for everyone ki why i mean why and certain roles in fact i have restricted that i don't want computer science people to apply no reason just because i want to give opportunity to everyone so just avoid all of that don't don't think too much about certification uh, minor codes focus on the other part projects internships uh, what you call as some 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 tool and framework learned and put as a part as a of your resume so focus on that part practical experience is more important than some uh, vanity metric in the form of a course yes sir uh sir yeah yes sir there are few more questions um sure. are internships enough to get test of corporate world before starting our own startup yes obviously uh, i mean it's a very vague question whenever someone says is it enough no nothing is enough in this world there is no thumb rule so i would disqualify this question in some ways but i to answer that question see internship is the bare minimum experience you can get in the corporate world as you call it uh but i would say startups is a different thing in an internship what will you do let's say you are a software engineering intern you go and you are going and writing code right that's it that's all you have learned 
in a startup let's say as an entrepreneur what all i am doing i used to write code i used to sell i used to do customer success i used to do customer support i used to hire i used to fire i am doing office negotiation i am uh, i am i am taking a talk over here i am talking to my advisor i am raising funds i have an incubator there are 50 things that i am doing coding is just one part of it so if you say is that enough no not at all nothing is enough for entrepreneurship writing code does not mean you can go and run a startup writing code is nothing i would say in my in my tech company writing code has 15% value if nobody is selling it what will you do with that code if you are not building a team around it what will you with that do with that code so it's a very 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 small part of the entire uh, startup thing so let's leave startups and other discussions for another talk yes sir sure uh, one more question is yeah. what about the topics like computer networking operating systems dbms are they needed for placement preparation not really i would say they are good to have so let's say this person for example they have a course uh, course work written here a multi process file server multi threaded client etc etc this is fine i mean if you have some time if time permits you can take up some online course on database or operating system uh, but frankly it's not required uh, i would say go for a go for a i mean when you when you learn django web development or an android app development they will teach you some basics of database as a part of the course that is sufficient uh if you have time why not i mean if if you have time do everything you can but if you don't have time that's fine just whatever you have done in django web development you have built a basic database which is storing blog post name of the author title number of upvotes comments that's more than enough yes sir uh, yes sir uh, one more question what courses do you suggest to students who want to pursue a career in data science um i think andrew ng's course is more than enough to begin with uh, i mean that's just to begin with obviously it's the surface only uh, at the most if you are interested you can take up a couple of ai machine learning courses on udacity u d a c i t y udacity.com they have quite a few paid courses but frankly you need to pay only if you want a certificate so there is a free version of the course as well so you can do the free version there are many courses online eduonix is there udacity coursera udemy just search on search and pick up one or two courses and start that's it okay sir uh, sir there are uh, no more few relevant questions we will be sure. getting some by sure sure so now let's move to interview preparation for placements so i think one very important aspect of interview preparation is uh, being able to solve problems quickly so again as i said a large part of so let's talk about two ways one is campus recruitment other is off campus recruitment so in campus recruitment the way placements work is you will be shortlisted on the basis of cpi or on the basis of resume so in computer science department a large part of shortlisting happens looking at the cpi because everyone has the same resume right i would have done same courses as my colleague i would have done same projects as my friend so i can't show something different so the way they do it is they will say let's shortlist these guys by their cpi so but that's that's what something you need to avoid because that's a commodity right cpi i mean if you if you are doing so much of side work apart from your department your cpi is going to get a hit so that's where you need to create a right balance you need to have good projects otherwise all the hard work you do you it will go waste so make sure you have projects on your resume so that interviewer or the recruiter they will look at your projects over and above your cpi so even though let's say you are you are not below you are below the 8.5 cpi cut off which most companies have they will still look at your resume and say look this this is interesting let's just interview this candidate they have done a lot of work beyond the curriculum so that's for the campus recruitment part <coughs> for off campus nobody cares about cpi if you have some iit something mentioned i mean forget cpi nobody cares unless it is like four pointer three pointer out of 10 uh, don't mention it in that case so it should not be exceptionally bad any moderate cpi 7 to 10 is fine nobody cares so that's one part second is the interview itself so in the interview expect a lot of rounds on data structures algorithms uh, fundamentals of programming and all so there is a platform called interview bit bit interviewbit.com it's a fantastic platform free to use solve as many problems as you can so that way you will be thorough with 
all the concepts of uh, what i mean all the common they contain a repository of all the common questions of google facebook microsoft apple falana dikana whatever companies you can think of right all the it, it's a repository of all the questions as an online judge so just solve as many problems as you can in the final interview preparation it it will be extremely important because companies will take data structures round they will come to your resume machine learning web development in the last round in the first few rounds you will be grilled on data structures and algorithms so interview bit is the best platform to prepare for that there are others as i said lead code is there etc etc you can try them out if you want to go beyond interview bit uh, there is a book called cracking the coding interview so it has been written by uh, someone who is a tech recruiter gail lackman mcdowell it's a fantastic book it will help you summarize all the concepts and then it contains a lot of problems uh, which which are most common in the industry again it's a book version of interview bit or i can say interview bit is a practice version of the book because interview bit came later book came first so definitely go ahead and solve that book it's a fantastic book so my suggestion is if you are constrained on time just focus on interview bit if you have extra time then pick up the book otherwise don't pick up the book so that's about interview preparation uh, all the data structure and algorithm stuff will be covered and um, lastly for the last round of interview you should be very thorough with your all the projects you should be able to convey what you did in that project who were your colleagues with whom you did that project what was your contribution what tools technologies frameworks did you use what are the challenges you faced in the project how did you counter those challenges what were the end results of the project so focus on those numbers focus on that data so i mean whatever i just mentioned that's a part of final touch so prepare a good resume there are some some good templates this template you can search on google you will get 50 such resume templates make it presentable make it look good one or two page resume both are fine uh, i would recommend if you have done a lot of work make a two page resume and follow this same format uh, education then comes experience which is where all you have done internship third is the projects part which is what all projects have you done uh, these dates are fine you can mention them it's optional up to you then uh, you can talk about relevant course work so see as this as you can see this person has also mentioned independent course work udacity this is fine this is good to mention people people would love to see that you have gone a step ahead to take up these courses okay so again they are not certificates but they are just courses completed without any certificate uh, then you should mention about skills what all you know what all programming languages tools framework you already know so again as i said whether you write java or you write python it doesn't matter what they want to see is do you know programming languages do you know a web framework so instead of django this could be node js which is fine and these achievements and all they are good to have uh, nobody cares so as you saw extra curriculars and all haven't been written because in the tech world nobody cares about extra curriculars so no point wasting time in building a section around por position of responsibility as they call it in the iit bombay lingo por Uh, or you are writing ki i was a first ranker in my dance competition nobody cares right do you know how to write code yes we will hire you dance competition ki kisi ko nahi padi hai nobody cares about that so just be wary of that uh, <coughs> if you are applying for such tech roles make sure you mention you don't mention irrelevant skills do not write ms excel word or powerpoint in your resume it leads to a negative impression I know that PowerPoint is a good skill. I know MS Excel is a good skill. But again, you are applying for a tech position. Why don't you have Django mentioned on your resume? When you are writing Excel PowerPoint, it looks like you ran out of skills. You did not learn anything. So just to fill up the resume, you wrote MS Excel and a PowerPoint and whatever, what, what not shit. Don't write that. It leads to a negative impression. Okay. So uh, that's that's extremely important uh, as a part of the resume shortlisting process. Second thing, as you saw. in this resume keywords have been highlighted postgres django tornado server web socket as you can see python so these are these are very useful because nobody has time to go through these resume i mean like i'll tell you as a startup we get 3500 resumes every month so for me it's very difficult to analyze each and every one so to the hr i tell them ki look at the keywords and shortlist accordingly android kiya hai kya ha theek hai shortlist kar lo something like that is what we do so make sure you have those keywords highlighted as a part of the resume 
तो जैसे यहाँ पे एंड्रॉइड दिख गया ना बस ठीक है शॉर्टलिस्ट कर लो कुछ तो किया है बाद में देखेंगे इंटरव्यू में देखेंगे मतलब रेज्यूमे सो मेक श्योर यू मैंशन यू हाईलाइट दिस की वर्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ रेज्यूमे यूज अ डिसेंट टेम्पलेट जिसमें जिसमें खाली बहुत सारी एम स्पेसेस नहीं होनी चाहिए इट शुड फिलअप द रिज्यूमे कम्प्लीटली सो या दैट्स अबाउट द फाइनल टच एंड लास्टली फॉर अ टेक जॉब एज आई सेट रेफरल्स लगाओ अपने दोस्तों से बात करो यू यू अप्लाई ऑन इंजर लिस्ट अप्लाई ऑन लिंक डेन पोस्ट ऑन लिंक डेन टॉक टू योर फ्रेंड्स एंड कलीग्स टॉक टू सम रिक्रूटर्स आई मीन ये दिस इज अ हार्ड वर्क यू विल हैव टू डू इसका कोई शॉर्टकट नहीं है ये मत सोचना कि तुमने इतना कुछ कर लिया है तो बैठे बैठाए जॉब लग जाएगी डोंट डोंट थिंक इट दैट वे इफ यू यू नथिंग नथिंग विल बी सर्व ऑन योर प्ले यू विल हैव टू अप्लाई टू फिफ्टी कंपनीज टू गेट अ जॉब सो दैट दैट शुड बी फाइन मतलब it's a hard part of the process you have done so much of hard work this is the last leg of the hard work which you have to do so yeah that's it uh, happy to take any questions i have a couple of slides left i think uh, gsoc pe ek slide hai before that i am happy to take questions yes, sir there are few questions mm -hmm. uh, said that uh, being read on code forces is not necessary but but does having a good uh, does having a good rating help Yes, it will help. मतलब if you have time, it will it will definitely help you because uh, I mean interview cl clearing the interviews will be very easy and quite a few companies they give weightage to good competitive programmers. So it does help. Yes, sir. Uh, so the following question is: uh, If we do self projects, then we won't be having certificate as proof. So does it? How does it help in resume? so so as i told you uh, it's not required at all i mean if you look at this resume did you why would you want to see the certification ki why has this been done so long as you are able to see ki fine they can code a blog application and they have done django etc etc so why do you need a certificate so nobody cares as i told yes sir um, yeah. uh, the subsequent question is people say that a person who wants to pursue a career in it is too busy during their college life to what extent is this true sorry can you repeat i missed it okay sir uh, people say that a person who wants to pursue a career in it is too busy during their college life to what extent is this true see uh, you have to be busy right i mean it's better to be busy than free so it's true to a large extent because um I mean that's the sacrifice you have to have. कुछ पाने के लिए कुछ खोना पड़ता है. So if you are thinking कि without any hard work you will be able to do some side work and get a good tech job, it doesn't work. So you have to be busy in the college life, no doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, one more question is, how do the non-CS students perform in job interviews compared to CS students? Also, what is the outlook of hiring companies when they are looking for non-CS students? so yeah, i'll tell you in my company i am from the computer science background and i do sales vikash is from chemical engineering he is a software engineer pankaj is from electrical engineering he is a software engineer shivam is a mechanical engineer he does sales raj is a software engineer he is doing project management devavrata is a mechanical engineer he is doing customer success management so i would say it doesn't matter right uh, non cs cs these are just terminologies at the end of the day how passionate are you about the work how well are you prepared that will get reflected in your interviews so there is no thumb rule which says cs guys perform better than non cs guys in the interviews no we have had brilliant guys who have had brilliant coding skills and who don't have a computer science background at all the, i mean they haven't done a btech in computer science so koi thumb rule nahi hai um Yes, sir. Uh, the next question is: uh, If we, if some has no internship at the end of four years, so how much that plays a parameter for recruitment? Given he is not from tier one. Yes. So I think if you don't get a tech internship after doing this much of work, you should really um, reconsider because I mean this will get you an internship. There are so many tech jobs lying out there. uh if you i mean if you if you haven't done if you haven't got an internship after doing this much of work you have done something seriously wrong so you should you should rethink so that is what my thought would be 
आफ्टर डूइंग दिस मच यू विल गेट एन इंटर्नशिप नहीं मिल रहा है तो मतलब कुछ तो लाइफ में एकदम गिवअप कर दिया यू वुड हैव डन समथिंग वेरी बैड सो यू शुड स्टार्ट लुकिंग एट योर फंडामेंटल्स यू शुड स्टार्ट क्वेश्चनिंग योर एक्जिस्टेंस आई वुड से मिल जाएगा इतना करने के बाद डेफिनेटली यू विल गेट एन इंटर्नशिप If not, then you have just wasted time. You have not done something properly. Yes, sir. Uh, the next question is: Is third year too late to start with coding and all? Not really. I mean, third year, fourth year, two years is enough. More than enough. Yes, sir. There are uh, no. Even question right now. Uh, we might get in something. Sure. Last is GSOC. Many people ask me that Google some kind of code, how is it, etc., etc. So I think it's quite good. If you are, if you, I mean, GSOC requires a lot of time. So don't do a parallel internship. Either do internship or do GSOC. Don't do two things at the same time. Um, honestly, I haven't applied for GSOC before, so I'm not the right person to comment on that. But definitely, GSOC is seen very highly in the resume. If somebody has done a GSOC, I would shortlist that person immediately, because in some ways, uh, uh, GSOC has an ecosystem of very good companies. So if one of these companies is shortlisting the candidate, I will I will anyway shortlist them. So yeah, that's about the short thing on GSOC. Um, it's quite good. It's quite a decent program at the college level and teaches you a lot of things. The only downside is that it's a it's a remote internship kind of thing, right? so i would not encourage remote i know at this time of pandemic situation people are forced to go into the remote mode but the learning experience is remote in remote is much lesser than the interactive experience when you meet people when you share ideas when you chit chat with them when you meet them over lunch and have discussions so that experience you won't get in gsoc so i would prefer a formal internship as compared to gsoc but having said that gsoc is quite good i will short shortlist a gsoc candidate any day so that's it i mean the talk is over uh mostly i mean it's all about questions now so yeah. we have got some questions collected now uh, the first question is uh, can you repeat the name of sites for internship uh angel list and uh, the other one is uh, linkedin i have mentioned it in the chat the uh, following question is uh, can a non cs guy intern in companies like google and amazon what are steps to be followed is there a natural bias towards cs guy in those companies um frankly there is no natural bias or something like that but yes these companies do hire a lot of uh, non cs people i mean uh, it's not uh, it's not something new companies do hire a lot of non cs people so that's absolutely fine so it's i mean you don't have to worry too much about cs non cs today all so long as you have completed the right curriculum companies are very open to such kind of um, i mean companies are very open they don't care about the degree and all so the next question is what are some decent decent sites to take some projects from uh udacity is there codesera uh, i'm just mentioning it in the chat codesera is there advonix is there udemy is there these are, these all sites have good uh, project based uh, implementations you can try out these sites they will have a lot of projects um so the next question is how should we approach for internships on linkedin uh approach as in uh, for internships like how to apply for internships on in linkedin or so i mean search for companies link see application process to google karo bhai google pe search wagera karo uh, what to call as just search, just search on google ki kaun si cheez kaise hoti etc etc i mean apply apply karne mein kya hai search karo internships companies kaun kaun si hiring kar rahi usme jobs ka ek section hota hai usme sab aa jata hai um so 
sir one question uh, related to startup is if one wants to come up with a startup that mainly deals with software what all resources are required yes startups dealing with software ke liye software is the last thing you should be worried about because see frankly startup mein kya hota hai ki you need to learn things which you don't know let's say you are already a programmer to tumko software to acche se aata hai right you already know the software piece so you don't have to learn anything on that what you need to learn is sales marketing hiring firing uh, uh, negotiations uh, what do you call as interviews how to interview people uh, customer support customer acquisition managing advisors managing investors managing incubators um, all all these things is what you need to learn because uh, you already know how to program right that's what i would say it's important to learn topics which you don't know so if you want to build a tech startup you have to learn everything except the tech because tech is something you know what else um so how much uh, value does being in iit is one of the tech team help in seeking tech intern tech interns and jobs sorry uh, can you repeat the question how much value does being in iit is one of the tech team help in seeking tech interns or jobs i i i haven't been in any tech team at iit so i can't answer that question so that means the answer would be ki it doesn't help at all Uh, so i think i don't think there are any other questions left now so okay so thank you sir for enlightening us with your knowledge it was a honor to have you as our guest i also thank everyone for attending the session i hope you have gained a lot from this and achieved clarity in choosing right path for yourself once again thank you everyone sure. and have a nice day thank you everyone thanks for your time uh, and uh, all the best uh, feel free to kind of connect with me on linkedin or any other platform uh, facebook and linkedin i'm quite active so you you feel free to connect with me um, and I, i i get quite a lot of requests often so you can drop me a polite message saying you were a part of this webinar so that i separately look at your message and connect with you so other than that as i said just to summarize uh, focus on building skills rather than learning tools and technologies so your focus should be on uh, building common sense your focus should be on building programming aptitude as compared to tying yourself to a tool or technology and you will go a long way in life so all the best thank you so much thanks for your time well thank you yatin and tanmay for organizing this yes, thank you sir thank you sir for being here yeah bye yes,